All right, everybody. Daniel Gaines here again. Just briefly, uh, just want to touch up on the last video. Uh, the notices are all sent. They are gone. I will update and inform whenever they're all received. Uh, I'm not going to do it one by one. And they're all pretty much going to the same relatively close location. So should be within the same day or two time frame that I get uh, that I get the information back. This is to advance the legal action for the violations of my rights. Uh, it's you've got to give the uh, whenever it's the court, you got to give the highest judge, unless it's him a chance, unless it's the highest judge, you got to give him notice, let make the highest judge aware of what's going on in the court uh, house, and then give that judge who has the authority over the rest an opportunity to correct the mistakes uh, before you can proceed with uh, lawsuits and such like that. Uh, as far as the CPS personnel, uh, the attorney general has been notified that's their boss. So that condition has been satisfied because Bob Ferguson himself has been sent a notice. Uh, I mean, the attorneys are all sent notice. However, there's it's, there's nothing really more they can do. I'm just going to proceed with the legal action for them. I'm just letting them know, uh, giving them notice to let them know what's coming to keep in accordance with the courts. They're, they've already said they're not planning to uphold my rights. They're going to keep doing what they're doing, thinking that nothing can be done. USC 18, 241, and 242 are both criminal. Y'all need to understand that. Y'all probably should really look at what USC 18, 241, and 242 are. 18, USC 18, 241 is, uh, is a conspiracy against rights. Takes two or more personnel. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'd really look into that one if I were all of you parties that are about to be receiving these notices. I'd look into that one and see how it applies to this case because it does and i've got the proof i can prove all my claims i don't make claims i can't prove never have never will and then usc 18 section 242 is deprivation of rights under color of law and that's been what's going on for almost 17 years now is deprivation of rights under color of law only this time now it's finally able to be dealt with it's actionable now uh it's also criminal 241 and 242 both are criminal depending on the severity of the of the violation it can include up to and include the death penalty nothing like that i mean it ain't nothing that i mean well could it be considered that severe yes the fact that it's been ongoing for 17 years almost uh the fact that if they're this easily doing it to me, that means they're easily doing it just as easily and uh, assuredly doing it to everybody else. So would it be warranted mm, in some courtrooms and in some cases with some attorneys and some judges? Yeah, life in prison, death, it would be it would be well warranted. In this particular matter, with the parties involved in this particular case, I don't think it I don't think it's anything that severe. I don't even think it's necessarily but again, this isn't for me to decide, but me personally, I'm not even an advocate for jail time, although I think they should be criminally liable and should go to jail for intentionally depriving people of their rights, especially parental rights. Uh, but loss of job, the fines, the lawsuits, that, yeah, that's, that's reasonable. That's not trying to be extreme or excessive. Uh, that's just right. That's how it should be. Y'all want to violate people's rights. Y'all want to falsify court documents. Y'all want to maliciously lie to the courts committing perjury. Uh, perjury in your documents as well, which is federal. Uh, Y'all made your bed. Y'all get to lie in it now. I'll just be the one to come tuck you in and tell you sweet dreams while I'm smiling at your ass in the courtrooms. I asked you and asked you and asked you. I pleaded with you. I practically freaking begged y'all to stop violating my rights, to uphold the law, uphold my rights. 
Y'all pretty much told me to kiss your ass. Judges, attorneys, CPS, which is the state. Y'all literally pretty much told me to kiss your ass. You don't have to uphold my rights. The state of Washington case law tells you you don't have to uphold my rights. You can do whatever the hell you want to do. Problem is, that's not really the way this shit works. It's not really the way this stuff goes. Due process is a thing. Uh, parental rights is a thing. Equal protection and application of the law. Equal protection under the law. Uh, I mean, that, that all matters. It really, truly does. Regardless if Washington law allows for it or not, the Supreme Courts have spoken, the U.S. Federal Appellate Courts have spoken, the District Courts have spoken, including the Ninth District, Washington. Y'all need to freaking pay attention to some of these court cases I'm sending y'all. In these notices, y'all are being hit with case law. Bob Ferguson and, the, and Judge Johnson, Gerald, I believe it's Gerald Johnson, you should see the amount of case law in their notices that they're getting. You're talking like 40, 50 cases, and that's only a small, a very small example of the case law that I will be illustrating in court when this action moves forward. Because in order for this action not to move forward, there's several things that need to be addressed. Like the past 17 years worth of civil rights violations, uh... Things that have been that I cannot get back. Like, how are y'all supposed to? How are y'all supposed to uh, give me back all the years that y'all stole from me and my daughter? How are y'all supposed to give me back her first words, her first step, her first date, her first heartbreak, her first day of school? All these firsts that a parent should get to be a part of with their children. How are you gonna give me those back? Good luck. Good luck. Hey, you can't. Unless you've got a time machine that you ain't telling anybody about. Y'all got your work cut out for you to figure this one out. Because I'm not stopping. I'm not going to slow back. I'm not going to back down on this legal action I'm bringing against y'all. Y'all can threaten me. Y'all can do what you want to do. You can screw me over in court further, which is already what you're going to do because I'm a male. I don't give a shit anymore. Y'all can kiss my ass. Farmer, you can kiss my ass and that's on the fucking record. Miles, Jarrell, Joseph, Curtis, all of you, Liz, all of you can kiss my ass. Y'all are done violating my rights. I'm done being nice about things. Y'all want to keep violating my rights. You want to keep telling me that you don't have to uphold my rights because Washington law doesn't, uh, doesn't require you to do so. Okay, fine. Fine. Y'all have told me to kiss your ass. Now it's my turn to say kiss my ass. All of you kiss my ass on the record. Period. Y'all made your bed. Y'all are going to lie in it. Farmer, I warned you during the hearing for the cease and desist. I told your ass that you were violating my rights. Your exact response? You've got options. Yeah, I've got options. I've got options. Have you held criminally liable for uh, conspiracy against rights and deprivation of rights under color of law? And then sue you the courthouse, the county, and the state for your deprivation of rights under color of law and conspiracy against rights. And I do hope you're aware, you moron, that sections 241 and 242 of USC 18, immunity doesn't apply to those. Just, just so you're aware. You really should check into the rights and the laws because you're a judge. Well, not a judge, but Commissioner Farmer, you're a, you're a commissioner. You should be aware of this stuff. Some little peon like me who's really not educated, never went to law school or anything else, should not be able to be, to be able to bring a case against you, uh, a legal action against you, as easily as I am. It, it shouldn't happen. There should be no possible way I can bring this action against the judge this freaking easily. I warned you it was a First Amendment right to me, for me to be able to record and post my recordings. Public officials acting in an area where they have no, ex acting in a manner where they have no expectation of privacy. When you're on a conference call with several individuals, five to seven or more, you have zero expectation of privacy. And considering it was CPS and such like that, they're state officials, which means they're in a public setting, public being the key phrase, meaning they have no expectation of privacy, it's completely legal. Completely legal. 
It can be recorded. It can be disseminated. I just can't blackmail anybody, which I'm not trying to do. It's not about blackmail. It's about holding y'all to account for your violations of the of the rights of the of the people of the state and, and everywhere else across the country. This isn't about this isn't about uh, blackmail or anything like that. No, this is about accountability. Family law courts, y'all get away with murder and it, literal murder, and you answer to nobody. Well, guess what? Now we're gonna we're gonna start fixing that. I'm not trying to get people to protest like some of these other people want to do for fathers' rights. It ain't going to make a damn bit of difference. It don't matter. We can protest till we're blue in the face and ain't going to change nothing. What will? Bankrupt all these states with the lawsuits for violations of rights. That'll stop it. That'll change the system. That'll make sure that fathers are not treated as second-class citizens any longer. And if I have to be the one to start, so be it. They've taken everything they can take from me. They won't give me the reunification therapy, which is what the law in the state of Washington requires for them to do under the circumstances, considering the parental alienation of malicious parent cannot be disputed or argued. CPS intake documents verify it. But, uh, <clears throat> pardon me. But it still doesn't change the fact that there is an action coming. You know, my recordings weren't done with malicious intent. It was done to, to it was done to, uh, it was done with a from a journalistic perspective. It's to raise awareness of the violation of rights and the illegal actions that agencies like CPS and, and such like that engage in. As a journalist, a freelance journalist, if you will, completely legal, completely legit, nothing illegal about what I've done. Supreme Court has uh, had cases presented to them where states have tried to go after people for doing similar stuff, and the Supreme Court has refused to hear it, which is basically upholding uh, where the other courts, the lower courts, meaning lower than the Supreme Court, have upheld that basically the person has the right to do so. The Supreme Court wouldn't hear challenges against it because it's a person's First Amendment right. Again, Farmer, I told you you were violating my rights. What was your exact comments? You have options. You're right. USC 18, 241, 242. What rights may, may you wonder? First, fourth, fifth, fourteenth, fifteenth. And that's just a quick glance. I could probably tie other ones into it, but there's really no need. It's, it is what it is. You've made your choice. You lie in it. Now I got to go back and look to see if it was Commissioner Farmer who also screwed uh, screwed me over and violated my rights during other hearings too, but again, it, it it'll all uh, it'll all uh, be out there anyway because I'm gonna stay public. They have no authority to tell me I can't stay go public with my case while it's ongoing. They have no legal authority or jurisdiction to tell me I can't. It's actually a First Amendment protected right. They cannot stop the legal action, and if they retaliate against me for bringing a legal action, that just ensures that the legal action is even greater. It also further almost guarantees that they do lose their careers as a result. Again, that's not my problem, and I don't give a fuck. I don't care if Commissioner Farmer can never work, be on a bench again. If these attorneys lose their ability to practice law for the rest of their life, I don't care if it causes them to go bankrupt, live on the streets in poverty. I don't care. They shouldn't be violating the rights of people and then basically making it a joke. Thinking it's a joke, thinking it's a game, thinking that they don't, they don't, they don't, they don't have any, uh, they don't have any authority. They don't have any rules. They don't have any laws. They can do whatever the hell they want. That's why I'm so callous and cold-hearted towards these crooked bastards. Because they honestly feel that they're above the law and can do whatever they want. And they're going to keep getting away with it because these judges are all in bed with them. It's all incestuous. And it's all so that way they can keep getting federal funds. Okay. Okay. Y'all have been at this game too long. Y'all have been playing this game with unopposed for far too long. Y'all think you're world champions at this game because ain't nobody been allowed to come sit at the table across from you and play back. You just had somebody sit down at the table. Good luck. Good luck. I mean that sincerely. Good luck. Terry Farmer. 
Good luck, Joseph Evans. Good luck, Curtis Huff. Good luck, Elizabeth Bedford. Good luck, Miles Russell. Good luck, Jarrell Evans. Good luck, Kate Orlando. Uh, let's see. Good luck to Carolyn Merling. Good luck. Seriously, y'all are going to need it. There's a legal action coming. It holds civil and criminal ramifications. And... Yeah, that's that's just all I'm saying. It's it's coming. Good luck. I hope y'all have I hope y'all have some uh some kind of uh legal voodoo doll or something because there's you ha you have nothing. There's nothing you can do or say that's gonna change anything that's coming. I've got literally over two hundred pieces of case law to support my claims. I've got emails, audio recordings and everything else to prove it all. I've got court records, court documents. Good luck. But to all of you watching and everything else, I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, it's a very corrupt and very broken system. Do Start doing a little bit of research into it. Seriously, check into Title IV defunding, uh, check into the family law courts, child support, and all that stuff. You'll start, pardon me, you'll start finding out all kinds of shady craps going on. You got attorneys, they'll make back deal, back room, uh, back room deals before they ever go into the hearing. Your own attorney will do it to you too. He'll make a deal with the other side and with the judge, and then they'll come out. And if you don't take this deal, they're going to screw you over. And if you take this deal, at best, you might get every other weekend to be a, to be a temporary babysitter for your own children, your own offspring. And then they're going to force you to pay 50% or just about that of your income to support the children who are not who you don't get to see for no reason at all because there's nothing wrong with you being around them other than the fact that the state will lose money. So they'll take all your income and everything else just so that way they can get $12 per every dollar of child support they get from title uh, federal funding through Title IV defunds. The state of Washington gets $12 for every $1 in child support they collect. Look into it. Look into where that money goes. Look into where Title IV defunding actually goes. Where does the money from Title IV defunding go? Check into it. Be amazed at what that stuff funds. You'd be amazed at why there's so much of an incentive for these judges to be corrupt and, and shady and violate the law and the rights of an individual. I mean, it's seriously sad. They violate their own laws. Literally violate their own laws just so that way they can cause high conflict uh, custody battles just so that way they can screw one party over just so that way they can rack up the amount of child support they can charge them because on 50 50 where it's legit 50 50 week on week off whatever the case is there shouldn't be child support because it's being done evenly when they don't charge child support the state loses federal funds that's why they screw you over and Washington State's bad about it towards fathers. Juliet, hell, Juliet even told me straight up to my face one time well, over the phone, but still. She straight told me the reason she went to Washington is because they are so freaking hardcore on fathers and they are so likely to screw over a father. She's told me that's why she went there. Illegally and fraudulently filed the documents there, but it is what it is. Y'all have had the opportunity to fix it. Y'all have had the opportunity to correct these wrongs. I've told y'all these violations of my rights. Y'all want to laugh and joke and think it's funny well commissioner farmer you've got 30 seconds enjoy have a nice day everybody bye